guys welcome to my channel gypsy jeep uh, so a little bit about me my name is baron boyd 28 years old i'm an army veteran uh, i get out around the end of 2019 2020 um, and since then um, i have been living and traveling out of my jeep here and there i've been able to hit the road full time due to some medical issues um, that i'm dealing with um, but the plan eventually is to go on the road full time. Um, so I've gone on a whole bunch of trips here and there. And every time I go on a trip, everybody stops me and asks me, Hey, do you have a YouTube channel? And I tell them, well, no, I don't have a YouTube channel. And then they ask me, Hey, would you be willing to start a YouTube channel? Because I would really love to see your, you know, Jeep in action or just out seeing some of the adventures you go on. So I took their advice and I thought about what they were saying and I decided, hey, why not? You know, couldn't hurt to start, start a YouTube channel. Maybe people would like to see what I got going on here. Maybe you'd like to come on some of my adventures. So, um, so yeah, this is gonna be my first video. So bear with me. I'm not very good with camera equipment and I'm kinda, you know, getting into the whole thing. Hopefully I'll get better as the channel grows, if it grows, right? Um, so for my very first video, uh, I kind of wanted to just showcase my Jeep and uh, kind of show you guys what I have going on that allows me to live on the road sustainably uh, pretty much indefinitely if I wanted to. Um, so yeah, with no further ado, that's what I'm going to do. Pretty much a Jeep build video for you guys. So uh, let's get into it. All right, so for this video, I'm gonna break it down into sections. Um, I'm only gonna be talking really about the stuff that um, allows me to sustainably live in my Jeep. Uh, I'm not really gonna be covering stuff like um, off-roading equipment that I have or you know anything that's just kind of extra that I got going on. Just the sole components that I need to live out of here sustainably so that's what I'm gonna be covering so I broke it I'm gonna break it down in sections for you so I'm gonna go over power sleeping arrangements hygiene and uh, probably storage space as well because that's obviously a pretty you know big topic right there because uh, you got to be able to store your stuff so uh, with no further ado we're gonna go into power first all right so first up on power right and I apologize for the wind and it might even start raining here in a second. So I, hopefully it won't start raining while I got the hood open. But so first up on power, I have a dual battery setup. So this is made by Genesis Off-Road. Um, the tray is, it, you know, it doesn't obviously come with the batteries and stuff, but it's a really cool um, tray because it comes with the tray that you put underneath that the batteries sit in, but it also comes with this whole bracket with all of this stuff pre-wired for you so you basically you don't have to do any of that stuff because a lot of dual battery trays that i see out there do not come with all the stuff pre-wired they just come with you know the tray itself and then all this stuff you have to do your yourself right so that's why i went with the genesis off-road personally um and i really really like it guys i have had absolutely no issues with this so for you guys who don't know or don't understand much about dual battery setups you have a starting the starting batteries in the back on this system 
and then you have an auxiliary battery in the front. So the starting battery's sole purpose in life is just to do what a normal car battery does. It starts the vehicle. Um, if the vehicle's off, it will run the headlights, the um, radio, or anything that's stock inside your vehicle. That's what the starting battery does, right? Then you have the auxiliary battery. Now this is where you're going to attach your accessories and you guys can kind of maybe see it but this terminal right here is your positive terminal you got your negative terminal over there and it's got all these spots where you can you know attach accessories to it right um so and that's exactly what you do you attach accessories to it so for instance and i'm not even sure if this is in frame or not but this little light right here that is hooked up to the auxiliary battery i also have a light bar Let's see if you guys can see that there's a light bar. I don't think you guys can see it behind the hood, but there's a light bar right there that's also hooked up to it. So, and one of the biggest things I have hooked up to it is my fridge. So what this allows me to do is I can literally run this battery to zero and still be able to start the vehicle because I have the um, starting battery back here. So it's basically a foolproof system to where I can run things indefinitely and use all the power while the vehicle's off and I have to worry about getting stuck somewhere, you know? And another cool feature with the dual battery setup for Genesis is they have this little, uh, again, it's hard for you guys to see, but this little button right here, you press it and it actually connects the two batteries together. So if for whatever reason, you're, the vehicle's not starting, you arc the two batteries together and boom, you're able to start the vehicle. So I really like this setup and uh, I don't think I'd be able to do this without this uh, dual battery setup. It is expensive, but I think it's well worth it in the end for me personally. So, moving on. So next up, see if I can get a good shot of this. Is that solar panel right there? My tripod doesn't go that high up, guys. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah. It is an 80 watt panel and it goes sorry for the shakiness to my goal zero Yeti 400 which is down here in this total wired mess so all right back uh, goal zero Yeti 400 so Here's the plug-in from the solar panel. And honestly, these guys are pretty self-explanatory. It is a power station. Um, you have AC right here. You got USB, and then you also have 12-volt car that you can plug into. And then I think Old Zero has these little ports that they have for some of their products. Um, I really like this thing. Um, I bought this thing used, uh, the Goal Zero, and I haven't had any issues out of it, guys. It's been a really good system, and uh, and you can see I'm charging my GoPro that I'm using to film this, charging those batteries, and surprisingly, they're already charged. I've only had them on for like five minutes, but uh, yeah, it's been a great setup, and I know some of you guys might think it's maybe a little bit overkill with... Uh, dual battery setup and the goal zero with the solar panel but i actually had the goal zero and the solar panel before i had the dual battery set up um it kind of just happened that way i didn't actually think i was going to need a dual battery setup but after running my fridge one night or for a few days the battery kept dying and it was just a nightmare all right guys so whatever the dual battery setup Went over the um, Goal Zero with the uh, solar panel setup. So the last thing I got going on for power, and I use the heck out of these all the time, are just these little little power packs. You know, they're just little uh, portable chargers. Great for kayaking, backpacking, stuff like that. I just use them in my Jeep. They're lightweight and. I don't have to constantly be hooked up to the Goal Zero. I just charge these with the Goal Zero typically. And um, 
<clears throat> to charge my phone or whatever I got to charge with them. So this one comes with a solar panel. I do have another one with a solar panel as well. It's just a single solar panel. I'm not really sure where the heck that one's at right now, but this is a similar to it. Um, and then other than that, I have this guy made by NetTech. And it's just a um, solar panel in and of itself. No battery hooked up to it or anything like that. But um, you just, I carry some charging cords in there and stuff. You can kind of see right there. It's just got a USB port. You just put that in. Throw this in the sun and it'll charge your phone. It'll charge battery packs like this. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I got going on for... Uh, power actually uh, I am missing one thing so hold on yeah so almost completely forgot to showcase this guy right here this is a Renogy 700 watt power inverter and this is just hooked up to my dual battery setup um, and I got this thing pretty much because um, the goal zero only does 400 watts so if I have something that takes more than 400 watts, I'm not going to be able to run it off to goal zero. So I got this as kind of just a backup in case I need to use um, something that uses more than you know 400 watts, um, up to 700 watts, right? Or just in general, if something happens to my goal zero, the battery goes bad inside of it, or for whatever reason, I'm not getting very good solar um, power, um, I can run any of my electronics that I need to charge or anything just right off this guy and uh yeah I mean it's a pure sine wave inverter it's really good for what it's worth um I'm not I can't honest to god remember how much I paid for this thing and this isn't even the best spot to mount this thing I know you guys are probably like man that's a terrible spot to mount that thing but yeah I kind of had a hard time figuring out where to mount this guy to be honest with you I struggled with it pretty hardcore and this was like the best I could come up with was just right here but you know I do I do have people sitting in uh, my passenger seat pretty often as you guys can see all the dirt and I think there's cheese crackers in there too <laughs> um so it does get kind of messy down here, um, but I haven't had anybody like mess this thing up too hardcore. One of my buddies ends up kicking this thing all the time and I hear that turn on, so yeah. So yeah, that pretty much wraps it up for um, power. Um, and if you guys got any questions about anything or just want more like in depth about the, the dual battery setup at the goal zero with the um, solar panel setup or even just some of those uh, uh, power packs that I have, um, you know, with the solar panel as well, the NetTech solar panel that I have. If you guys want any more information on that, just leave a comment down in the uh, comment section. Let me know and I can go over it more in depth um, or use YouTube because YouTube uh, has probably reviews on all the stuff that I've used at this point. So... Maybe not the Genesis Off-Road Dual Battery, because I actually have not seen a crap ton of reviews on that. Uh, but Genesis Off-Road actually does have a video on like installation and everything and whatnot. That's actually what I use to install it. And it's actually really, really easy to install. So I think without the dual battery set up that th this whole Jeep and living on the road and stuff would not be possible. So uh, yeah, so now we're gonna move on to sleeping arrangements. Okay guys, so this is obviously my bed platform that I have inside the Jeep. Um, so you guys can kind of see this piece right here. So I actually have the mattress itself kind of cut in half, I guess, if, or not really in half. It's got this, this little chunk right here. And this actually goes on the back side. So when I have the tailgate and everything closed, I just push that back there and to complete the bed. I sleep with my head this way and yeah and I quite literally have to climb through this guy like this this is typically how I do it it is not the best setup in the world but it is what it is when you're living out of a Jeep because I mean Jeeps are not like the best camping vehicles in the world they're awesome and you can go places with them and stuff but uh 
yeah, so let me. So you guys can kind of see I have a flap right here. Typically what I do is this just sits down, that'll sit over it. And what you guys can actually, hold on, let me hold that down. What you guys can kind of see is that I have these two hinges right here. So when I flip this over, it sits on this. And these two can hold 250 pounds a piece. So 500 pounds in total. So it is a pretty good um, way of extending this. So I do have to, like you saw earlier, I do have to pull up the uh, front seat up there, the passenger seat, pretty much all the way forward. Um, and yeah, so I mean, that's pretty much uh, my interior sleeping arrangements for the Jeep. Um, it is not my preferred way to sleep, guys. I'll be honest with you, I this is like my last resort sleeping arrangements. I actually prefer to sleep in a tent or um, outside under my awning, which I will show you guys. In the, well, you guys kind of already saw a little bit, but uh, I'll put a cot underneath my awning and sleep like that. So I'll go over all that here in a second. But uh, yeah, it's my last ditch effort um, of sleeping arrangements but i also if i am stealth camping if i'm camping in an area like a walmart parking lot or somewhere where i'm not even sure i'm supposed to be i sleep inside the jeep that way nobody really bothers me um, and i feel a little bit more safe and i mean when you have a tent out there it's kind of like hey here i am come bother me kind of thing so yeah all right so next up guys i'm not actually going to pull these out and show you what they look like and stuff because it's pretty self-explanatory but like i said i like sleeping in the tent so um right here i have alps mountaineering links two it's a two-person backpacking tent pretty lightweight uh packs up pretty uh small and uh yeah, I actually just picked this thing up, guys, and I really, uh, I really like it. It's easy to set up, easy to deal with, and everything. And so, um, what I'll typically do, set this tent up, and I will actually pull out the entire mattress out of my Jeep and set it inside the tent. And that's typically how I sleep um, a lot of the time. Um, and again, it's all dependent on where I'm at, what I'm doing, and kind of how fast I want to pack up the next day when I get up and need to leave, or if I'm staying somewhere for an extended period of time. So yeah, besides that, sometimes I'll put a sleeping pad down, or sometimes I will put this cot, which I will show you guys here in a minute. Um, I will put a cot inside uh, the tent and sleep like that. I basically just sleep with a sleeping bag, nothing too crazy. In a location like this, not that I actually can sleep here or camp here, this is actually part of the park. Um, it's a really nice, beautiful spot, but I actually can't camp out here. If I did, the park rangers would essentially shoot me off. So, um, But if it was a spot like this, this is actually a spot where I actually would not tent camp just because the wind that's been coming in has been absolutely crazy. And also, I mean, it's kind of... As you guys can see, it is pretty much all just gravel rock. So, not the funnest thing to sleep on. Um, yeah, so that's the Lynx 2. Love it. Great tent. Right here, um, and I guess I probably should say real quick, um, with this tent, this is like summer. Summer and fall tent. I'm not really using this thing in the winter too much or if at all. And that's when this guy comes in. This is a, this is by One Tigress. It is the two to four person North Gaze TP hot tent. So I have a hot tent stove. Um, if you guys don't know what hot tenting is, you can kind of look it up on YouTube. Um, or later in some of my videos, I likely will be hot tenting. It's actually too warm right now in Kentucky is where I'm at, uh, two hot tents. So I'm probably not gonna end up hot tending tonight when I sleep but uh, this is pretty much my winter setup guys I will set this thing up set the cot up inside and I will run the wood stove the hot tent stove uh, with this hot tent and yeah so 
summertime, wintertime pretty much. And depending on the situation, I might end up using this and use the Mr. Buddy heater I have um, versus this. It just, again, depends on the kind of situation because with this tent, you have to use stakes. Whereas this one is freestanding. So sometimes trying to use this actually becomes an issue and you're able, not able to do it properly. So that's when this guy would come in handy. And I also have a really good sleeping bag or sleep system actually. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much with the tents. So, I also forgot to showcase guys that right here in this little cubby is where I have a blanket. This is also where I keep my, um, I also have a Mexican poncho up here, but I also keep my um, sleeping bag, my sleep system. It comes with a summer sleeping bag, a winter sleeping bag, and a bivy. And I typically keep that right there. And depending on what time of year it is, is what I have. If it's summertime, summer sleeping bag goes in there. Winter sleeping bag goes up top in one of my storage containers. And since it's kind of getting winter time ish, I'm actually just rocking the winter sleeping bag with the bivy because the bivy really helps out with uh, insulation. So, yeah, and typically that's what I'm using. I really don't use blankets that much. I do have a blanket um, in case it's a really hot day, but most of the time I'm using my sleeping bags. And I also have this Mexican poncho, which I, which I can use as a blanket as well. So, all right, so as you guys can see, I have my TP style tent. Again, it's kind of winter time right now, so this is what I've kind of been using. It's going to be too hot to actually use the stove tonight, but this cubby space right here is normally where I store whatever time of year it is, is where I store this um, uh, whatever tent I'm using. If I'm not, if it, the tent I'm not using, I actually store it in one of my storage containers up on top of the Jeep. Um, so yeah, but I also store my cot in here as well so this is the nature hike um hey how's it going nice hey appreciate it all right i am back sorry about that i had somebody actually stop by and uh talk to me so just asked me about my jeep and kind of the area and stuff whatever so but yeah this is the nature hike outdoors cot i don't remember how much i paid for this thing but i got it because it's really like it is a lot less bulky than the cot i did have which was a military style cot and um yeah let me set it up for you guys all right guys i gotta gotta go in a little bit for you guys but oh. um thing is a bit much to set up sometimes but it's well worth how compact and lightweight this thing is so it comes with these metal poles like this and like you just saw me doing you put it in through one end and it's a lot more difficult than it looks, to be honest with you. The, the first one's usually harder than the second one, but uh, so you set them up like so. And I typically like to set up like this. Make sure it's set up like this, All right? So it's got a little latch right there, so you'll connect. Connect just like so. It does take a little bit of force to get that going, to be honest with you guys. Uh, it's a uh, a little tough for some people, not so much me, but some people it might be decently tough. Here we guys go, one genuine cut. So that's the cut. Ooh. Now this is the low configuration. The reason I got this cut, another reason for it, 
is because it comes to height settings, guys. Um, so right here, you can see, I'm not gonna actually set it up like this, but it comes with these legs. So you can actually set this thing higher if you need to, or you can keep it as low as you need to, like it is right now. So this makes it really good for pretty much all any and all camping situations and uh, makes everything really comfortable. So you guys can kind of see right here. Um, like I said, I wasn't gonna put one on, or put them all on, but I'll put one on. Just goes in, pops in just like that. And yeah, so two different height settings. I think this thing sports up to like 300 and something pounds. I'm not sure if he even says it on any of this stuff, but uh, I weigh 275 pounds and it holds my butt pretty good. So, um, yeah, so like I said, I will use this in my two person backpacking tent. I will use this in the um, TP tent um, with the hot stove. I will sleep, if, depending on the weather, uh, sometimes I sleep under my awning and I'll just literally sleep on this, guys. Um, and honestly, it's really comfortable and um, I quite frankly like it. Um, I guess it, it is a bit much to set up, but it is pretty nice. All right, so the last way I sleep, which I actually physically cannot set up here, The stuff sack, compression sack. I have a hammock set up, or just everything I need for a hammock, I should say. Um, so I have a winter under quilt. And then um, I have the actual hammock itself, which comes with an integrated bug net. And uh, also the straps are in there as well. This one is made by Cove, Cove Cure. I think it's a C, I'm not really sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, integrated bug net comes with the straps. Pays like 20 bucks on like Amazon, I think it was. Um, it wasn't very expensive at all and really nice. So um, I can't set up a hammock in this area to show you guys kind of like how it looks or whatever, but um, sometimes I'll sleep in a hammock. Uh, so like if I can find a good spot for hammocking, I actually will just set up the hammock. It's actually a lot more simple to set up a lot of the time than um, the tent is. And um, hammock is quite frankly pretty comfortable. I do it more so in the summer than I do in the winter for pretty obvious reasons and stuff. But for winter, I have this underquilt, and this is a winter underquilt. It is not a very expensive one, it's made by AMAA. It is super, super bulky, as you guys can see. Even that compression sack is not. Um, compress this thing all that great um, so that is kind of a downside with this wouldn't be all that great for backpacking necessarily um, but I don't even have a hard time putting it back in that compression sack but uh, I'll do that in a second but so it's pretty much all the sleeping arrangements that uh, I'm gonna have guys uh, minus not really showcasing the super hardcore for you guys but um, as you guys can kind of see, I have this awning, and like I said, that this awning I will just sleep underneath sometimes. Uh, I just have space, and I just set it up and just lay underneath it. A really nice day, temperatures or something like that. Uh, it's an awesome place to sleep underneath. So. Oh man, I tell you what guys, that wind is getting killer right now. So, um, 
Yeah, so next up is going to be uh, hygiene. So um, obviously I have to use the bathroom, I have to shower myself, and I have to brush my teeth and all that jazz. So let me show you how I take care of all that stuff. Okay guys, so using the bathroom. to read this uh, you can pick it up at Walmart I, I can't read that because I got that thing on it uh, this thing was like 20 30 dollars I think it was and uh, it's obviously a portable toilet seat let me make sure angle that down obviously you can just sit on it and while I'm using the bathroom. Um, so this thing is kind of cool. Because this part comes up and what you can do is put a plastic bag, plastic trash bag or something like that. Close that down and now you're able to poop um, and pee if you need to inside the trash bag or something like that. But typically what I'll do is if I'm in a spot where um, I'm not really worried about having to clean up my waste all the time. I'll actually just take a uh, small shovel that I have, a small folding shovel, like the ones you guys get from Walmart, and uh, just kind of dig a hole in the ground and then set this guy on top of it and poop and pee just right there. Well, I'm a guy, so I typically just stand up to pee, but um, for pooping, this guy rocks. Um, and honestly, I was trying to do it without this guy for a while and I regret every ounce of not having this because um, it really made life a lot easier not having to squat down to use the bathroom and I felt like I used the bathroom a lot more uh, better typically than I was with this or without this guy so uh, definitely an awesome thing to check out it's not too expensive so if you are thinking about road life fan life even camping this guy rocks So as far as storing this, all I do guys is put it right here. Right behind the, the passenger seat is where I set it and it just goes right there. I scoop back the passenger seat all the way and it holds it in place. It doesn't rattle, make a lot of noise and it's probably the best spot for it. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much how that goes. And uh, yeah, bathroom. So as far as showering while I'm out in the middle of nowhere, guys, this is pretty much how this goes down, right? I got a little button up here. And uh, yeah, that wasn't supposed to happen. As you guys see, it's running water, and so what I'll do is take a hose and connect it on the portion right here, on the threads, and uh, I can take a shower. So, if you look over there, there is my uh, water tank, and that is where I get the water. Uh, the water hose essentially just runs underneath the bumper and runs to a water pump that sits in Right behind here, there's a big hollow space and that's where the water pump sits. And uh, it really is just an easy system to deal with. And with the quick disconnects, it's pretty awesome. Um, I actually got this idea off a YouTuber named Drew Sims, um, who got it off of a YouTuber named uh, Kramer Junction. Definitely check out their YouTube channels. I pretty much follow Kramer Junction's uh, 
build for this entire thing. Uh, the only thing I didn't use that he did use was the same water pump and that was it. I just went with the cheaper option because that's just the way I am. Um, so yeah, that's running water. That's what I used to shower. This is what I use to wash my hands if I need to and stuff. And um, yeah. So guys, as far as showering does go and stuff, sometimes I shower while I'm on the road, but, um, or like on the road. Sometimes I shower I'm out in the middle of nowhere, but I usually use the system I just showed you. And that's what I use to shower. But not every place that you go to, you can use that because, you know, people are around and people are watching and it's not typically a system that you can use just willy nilly, you know, so, um, especially in public areas. So, um, another way that I shower while I'm on the road is I go to truck stops. Um, truck stops typically have uh, showers available for the truckers. Truckers pay to go use the shower and yeah. And so you can also pay to go use the shower and that's where I typically go to you shower if I'm like, you know, if I'm road tripping somewhere, I need to stop and take a shower. That's where I'm gonna stop and take a shower. Pay a few bucks, take a shower. It's a nice warm shower because with this system, it's not always warm. Um, works pretty well. Um, another way that I shower, I'm not even sure if it would be really considered showering, but you know, if I'm only going out for a few days at a time or just in general, I, you know, it's cold out and I don't really want to shower, maybe do something inside my tent. I should just take wet wipes and I'll just wet wipe myself, excuse me, down and um, take care of all my personal hygiene like that. Uh, with the hair though, uh, I'll just use dry shampoo and um, I spray yourself explanatory, just use dry shampoo and um, yeah, just baby, baby wipe shower shampoo. It's not the best way to stay clean. Obviously, you're going to want to take like a legit shower at some point, but for what it's worth at the time, it works pretty well. You know what I mean? And uh, I carry baby wipes or wet wipes with me all the time anyway, because they're great for cleaning up messes. They're great for cleaning up your hands. They're great, obviously, for using the bathroom, especially if you're a guy uh, for obvious reasons. Um, so yeah, wet wipes, definitely carry them on with, or carry them with you whenever you're on the road because they help out big time, straight up. So as far as a personal hygiene kit, guys, um, I just have this old dude from when I was in the army. And typically I'll just take this, uh, the strap's broken, sucks, right? Um, and I set it up like so, and I can put my deodorant on, I can, take medicine if I need to, beard maintenance, because obviously that's a thing I have to take care of. And I just do majority of that stuff right out of here. And um, I also have, to help me out with beard maintenance, hair maintenance and stuff too, I have this little spray bottle. Just, I totally just broke it by accident, by the way. That sucks. <laughs> Good thing I got a backup. Uh, but yeah, it's just a misting uh, spray bottle and uh, I use this thing fairly often to just take care of my um, beard hygiene and hair hygiene needs. Um, so yeah, definitely looking to get a little spray bottle. These things aren't super expensive um, and I'm glad they're not super expensive because I obviously just broke mine, um, which I think is wild because I completely disarmed the thing, but it is what it is. All right, guys, next thing is talking about um, food because we just wrapped up hygiene. So we're going to talk about food, um, cooking food, storing food, all that jazz. So no further ado. Make sure that's in a good shot. There we go. So this is my kitchen, guys. Um, I have the same principle as the bed with those. Got the stove right here. A little drawer, this is where I keep all my spices. And down here is where I keep all my utensils, um, cups. I keep my um, propane tank. Some tin foil in there, nothing too crazy. Um, works really well. Actually, I take the guys off this thing to show. So, 
right here. And it's not the most organized thing in the world, but this is where I keep my camp oven. Got two cast irons, got some uh, plastic wrap. Not that I really even need that or use that. Got a pan. The list goes on. And that's pretty much where I just keep these things. Got a little divider right here. And yeah, that's pretty much my camp cooking setup. And um, I don't actually always cook off of the off this guy the propane uh the coleman classic two man or two burner stove um sometimes depending on the situation i use one of these guys uh, it's just a little rocket stove um but honestly my preferred method of cooking is to take a um wood burning stove of some sort like my solo stove light here and cook like that because propane costs money and wood is as you guys can see over there wood is free not that the solo stove light can really hold that much uh wood in it and stuff but it stays really hot so hold on a sec can't do this one-handed Guys are unfamiliar with the solo stove. This is the solo stove light, and I'm actually about to lose that bag. Oh okay, yeah, I'm back. Uh, sorry about that. Solo stove light. It's a really good design. It does a double burn. It's, it's pretty much smokeless for the most part. Um, set this guy on it, set a pan over it, and you're quite literally cooking with fire. I love using this thing. Um, I've only had it for a little bit, but honest to God, guys, I love using that thing. Now, I'm not actually going to pull the other one out, but I have a Solo Stove Ranger, which is pretty much the same principle design as this guy, as a Solo Stove Light, but it is a fire pit. It is massive in size. I use it for... It, it, like if I show up at a spot, a campsite, um, or a spot where there is no campsite, I'm just pretty much finding a random place to camp for the night. Um, and I want to have a fire, but there's no fire, like established fire pit and stuff. I will pull out my solo stove ranger and set up a um, fire pit more or less. And I cook over it a lot too, because just like this, it cooks really well. Um, and stays very, very hot for a good long time. So... Uh, once it gets down to the coals, I mean, it, it'll burn for 10, 15, 20 minutes before it actually gets uh, cool. So you can very easily cook over it. So it's pretty awesome. Uh, besides that, I have a Pomali um, hot tent stove, wood stove, and I can cook on that. Uh, I'm actually going to pull that one out. Uh, later videos, I might showcase that, but I will cook on that as well. Uh, but that's something I use inside my hot tent. And again, I'm not using my hot tent today, so I'm actually not going to, you know, pull that out. So, All right, guys, as far as food storage goes, um, I have this huge storage box here. It's actually got three sections on it. I'm going to pull it all the way out. But right here, this front portion is essentially my pantry. Um, so in this top part i just have you know some tortilla shells maybe got some pasta some uh idaho spuds it's awesome some croutons for salads uh, some plastic bags for when i get done you know i got these little strings you kind of see me grabbing it that whole thing lifts out down here i got even more food storage so this is typically where i keep my canned stuff or stuff that's bulky got rice chips um there's some good old tuna down there you got some good old classic alfredo which i haven't used in a long time and some uh, jelly some peanut butter you know hold on yards um instant coffee because uh you know i'm not one of those super bougie campers that has to do all that stuff all the time with the coffee 
all that bougie coffee stuff. And yeah, that just sits right there. Um, as far as stuff that needs to stay cold. Stack hole for itch. I think that's how it's pronounced. And uh, yeah, go ahead and judge what I'm eating in here, but um, it's a really good, it's a really good little fridge, guys, honest to God. Um, holds a bunch of stuff. Um, it is pretty disorganized right now because I kind of just threw stuff when I was just at the store earlier. And uh, yeah, I, I just keep that right here. Um, I have it on this tilt sliding hinge i guess is what you would call this thing i pretty much uh i saw some people that had something similar to it and i kind of just you know built something that was fairly similar to it and uh yeah that is where i keep all my cold stuff and um that's pretty much it for food guys um obviously with water you guys already saw with the hygiene stuff, I get water from here, which is this tank. So, uh, but another way I get water too, because I like to carry a decent amount of water on me. There's five gallons in that. And as you guys can see right there, it says 2.5. It's 2.5 gallons, it's not obvious all the way full right now, but uh, this is typically where I get my drinking water from. I just fill it up right there. And uh, this is more showering, cleaning, water if anything i mean I, I will drink the water out of there but it's not like it's nasty or anything it's just i typically just use this because it's just a little bit more convenient to you know do that so i also you know for cooking stuff i keep uh i guess this plays more into the hygiene aspect to it but this is where i keep like my dish cleaning stuff there's a tub here some uh paper towels because i clean a lot of stuff with paper towels um i just keep all that stuff right there um nothing too crazy um this is also a place i change guys that's usually where i carry my wet wipes and other um like hygiene stuff foot powder and what have you so that pretty much wraps it up for um the food portion and how i eat and where i cook and stuff like that um Again, if you guys want anything more in depth about any of this, like how I constructed the bed platform, all these drawers and stuff, the kitchen, any of the stuff, just, I mean, leave a comment and I will go over it and show you guys what I got going on a little bit more in depth. This is just kind of an overview again of what I got going on that helps me live out of my Jeep sustainably. All right. So next up guys, I'm gonna be talking about just some storage and where I keep everything. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna carry around like I was just a second ago. So obviously I can already showcase this drawer and you guys kind of got the basic concept with it. It's the whole length of this drawer. It's very long. It's as long as this portion in here. I know it's not very bright, but um, yeah, I mean, it runs more than half of the bed platform, realistically, on this drawer. It's as long as the kitchen. There you go. <laughs> Just to make that easier. So, it's got three sections. The back section, I keep uh, tools and stuff like that. Ratchet, or not ratchet straps, I'm sorry. Actually, yeah, no. Um, bungee cords. I keep the ratchet straps in here. I have, I can pull this whole drawer out. And underneath this, it is extremely difficult to see, almost impossible to see, but um, I have a little cutout right there where I can actually access in here. I have like a bottle jack, ratchet straps, a tire repair kit, uh, some jump uh, jumper cables, stuff like that I keep right in here. But back to this drawer. Um, so the back portion of the drawer is basically just um, tools. The middle section is like electronics or anything like that is camping stuff and um yeah um i actually sometimes will take my xbox on the road with me and i actually keep it inside here 
hence why I have a locking mechanism on it because I don't want people to steal my crap. Um, right here is my camera storage, not where I keep my GoPro. There's actually a camera my mom gave me, or I should say she's letting me borrow with air quotes. Um, and I keep that in here, keep it on lock because I don't want people to obviously jack that either. You guys kind of already saw this. This is pretty much the bulk of my tools. Um, I got a Stanley tool case here and a torch, um, ratchets. Um, it's like an off-roading, um, that's for my high left jack, which is on the front of the vehicle. I don't even know if I showcased that or not yet, but screwdrivers and stuff in this. Um, yeah, uh, I do pretty much all my own maintenance, guys. I do my own oil changes, uh, tire rotations I do myself. Um, pretty much anything that's been done to my Jeep as far as the lift or putting the roof rack on, I do, I've done all myself. So because of that, I carry tools around with me because <laughs> you never know when something's gonna go wrong. Over here, I just have a little bit of cubby space too. This bag is my fire starting kit. So I guess carry stuff like lighters and what have you in there. Under here, sorry, I thought I heard someone coming. There's a little cubby space right in here. This is where I keep, uh, I have some tomahawks, some machete, kukri, stuff like that. Got a saw and a hammer right here. I tried to make the best use of all cubby space. So I have the exact same cubby space with this little flap here on the other side as well. Up in this cubby space, I keep um, shoes. Um, I keep, uh, this is my wet weather jacket um, and some other stuff, nothing too crazy. My tripod for my camera goes right over in this little cubby space. As far as closed storage goes, Apologize. Hey guys. Well, hey guys, uh, here I am uh, having to reshoot the uh, rest of the storage for my Jeep. Uh, the video file got corrupted, so yeah. Um, shooting this literally months later at this point. Um, so yeah, let's just get right into it. Uh, so as you guys can see, I got two tough boxes up there. Front one is mostly tool storage. Um, and the rear one is mostly just camping stuff. Uh, I think I got like a hammock up there. Um, some, I think I got like a little small backpack that I could take like on a little day hike kind of thing up there. Just some, you know, stuff like that. Nothing crazy. Um, oh, probably want to talk about this. This guy, um, is my winch accessory box. Um, Got a little locking mechanism that runs to the latch right here. Um, it's all wired in because just the way the thing's designed, I had to put this in there just to make sure nobody gets in there and jacks my stuff. Um, I can literally just open it mounted to this uh, rack right here um, and just pull anything out that I need. I can also dismount the entire box if need be. I don't really typically do that though. So uh, I actually don't usually have to use my winch stuff too often. <laughs> I usually turn around before I even have to get to that option. Um, i got a rifle case here. Um, I keep camping stuff and a, um, like lubricants and stuff, WD-40, PV blaster, stuff like that for any maintenance. Keep that up there. Um, above that, you guys can see, I literally just got this thing and I'm psyched about it. Now I'm sorry for the bad lighting, guys. It is later in the afternoon. Uh, but it's an Ilar EY LAR box, or a uh, tough box. Uh, bought it off Amazon, it's pretty good. Cost me about 300 something dollars. Um, I got that to replace the big green tough box I had up there. I was just having drag issues with it and it was uh, getting caught by the wind a whole bunch and just causing me to have bad gas mileage. So I uh, wasn't too happy with it. So I spent the money and just got this. And uh, honestly, I'm way happier because it's shorter but fatter. 
and um, has a lot more storage room in there, believe it or not. I actually, I could actually put more clothes in there now than I could prior. So that is pretty freaking awesome. Uh, right here, got this tire backpack or I don't know what the heck they call these things. I know Trasher is one of the brands for them, but um, other than trash storage, I use this for wood. Keeps everything nice and dry, so I like that. Um, and then, last but not least, on roof rack storage, I got this clamshell, and uh, it's Cabela's brand. Um, I actually bought it secondhand from somebody. Pretty awesome. It's uh, really, really spacious in there, so I keep things like my inflatable kayak, solo stove ranger, a Mr. Buddy heater, my poly wood stove, uh, an extra tent, one of the tents I showed you guys, the uh, two-person tent, I put that up there. Well, actually, I switched the tents around depending on the time of the year. So, like, you know, here in a few months, springtime will be hitting pretty hardcore. So, I'll be taking the two person, moving it down here, and then taking the uh, uh, wood stove tent and putting it up there. So, uh, yeah, um, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Everything just sits on this uh, uni strut and is. Um, bolted in for the most part except for uh, something like this I just have this ratchet strap down um, so yeah pretty happy with all of the storage that I got going on up there uh, it does obviously make the Jeep a lot heavier up top but I love it because it makes me just a little bit more it, it will doesn't make me specifically, but it just makes it a little bit easier to live out of this because I have so much more, you know, storage. So might be a little inconvenient when driving, but I love it. So I'm not sure if I showcase this drawer, but this is my electronics drawer. This is where I keep uh, like my drone, laptop, GoPro. I got this little small TV. I got it pulled out right now. That's where all this stuff goes. Um, just simple little system. Got the latch. Got that for padlock. Got a little bit of storage behind the go uh, goal zero here. Um, and then the same thing is on the other side. I got a flap and I just keep some stuff under there. Um, I did make one improvement other than the uh, tough box up there to my overall storage system, which was switching those boxes I had in here to dry bags. Um, these things are a lot, you know, uh, what's the word I mean? They're a lot less bulky. I can actually put more inside these bags. And, um, you know, it's like when I'm sleeping in here, I don't have to be kicking something hard or whatever, whenever I'm doing stuff or like, you know, I this is my fishing backpack. And trying to get this thing in here with those boxes in there was just a pain in the butt. So with this system, it works a lot better. Um, and I'm quite frankly very happy with it. So um, yeah, that pretty much wraps it, wraps it up for storage on the uh, Jeep guys. And yeah. So if you guys hung out or hung out to the uh, end of the video, I really appreciate it. I know, again, I'm new to the whole YouTube thing and shooting videos and stuff. So maybe this wasn't the best video you've ever seen in your entire life. But hopefully I will start to get better at making videos and shooting stuff and talking about stuff, you know, because it is kind of weird sitting out here, I won't lie talking to yourself especially when you think someone's coming up and then all of a sudden someone comes up and they hear you talking to yourself or talking to the camera you're kind of like oh, that's a little awkward <laughs> so um if you guys like the video leave a like comment subscribe if you guys want to see more about my jeep or more in depth about anything again just leave a comment ask me about it and i can make a video about it or just answer your question question in the comment section and uh yeah, so, uh, Gypsy Jeep. <laughs>